had great, great, uh, great discussions and great cases. Let's see what we can do here about HBR, high bleeding risk, while I think Dr. Sharma and Dr. Kinney make their way towards here. So we'll have a lot to discuss until then. Oh, Dr. Sharma just arrived, so we've got to go fast now, you change go pace. Fast. Go fast. So this is an 80 year old, year old person with uh, hypertension, anemia, CAD, PCI middle AD, RCA, with a taxus, a recurrent angina, and you can see three vessels CAD, offer cabbage, refused cabbage, and you can see the uh, angiograms here in a very complex left main and triple vessel disease, and ultimately a very good result at all these counts. And the intervention summary, you can say the aspect is the schedule of the PDA, but clearly the main job was done, as you can see here. So what's the antithrombotic strategy as, at, uh, at uh, follow-up is uh, determined by ischemic and bleeding risks and many complex criteria. And in this uh, environment, we know very much about the complex criteria of the lesions, the vessels, and all that. I think uh, the European uh, society uh, did a very, very important uh, document regarding the uh, ARC HBR and the ARC group, really, with many, many factors that are there. They're there. Many patients have it. But I think because they weren't grouped, maybe we're going to kind of put in together the fact that, uh, you know, they're more prevalent than we ever thought or ever imagined. So the balancing perhaps is by de escalating or reducing dual antiplatelet therapy or its intensity to a single agent or not. And you can see the twilight by reducing the aspirin, cutting down the aspirin, the bleeding was almost halved. And this had a lot of questions. Or could that be happening and be applied with a complex PCI? And the answer was yes, when we did the complex analysis of our patients in this study that included, as you see on the left-hand side, very, very important complex subgroups of patients. And then further analysis indicated that the high bleeding risk patients, according to the previous criteria that I show you from the ARC European group, uh, they had a lot of uh, savings in, uh, in, uh, in bleeding particularly. And uh, this has been further analyzed in, the, uh, in a very large meta-analysis of over 24,000 patients. And the monotherapy indicated a lot of bleeding savings, tremendous bleeding savings without any penalties in the uh, MACE. In the mass adapt also, the abbreviated adapt was a, 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 a winner. In fact, that it was essentially the same by the way anybody can see any of these graphs. They're the same except for bleeding that was again nearly halved. Uh, regarding the uh, de-escalation, that's another way to cut down. If you don't cut an agent, you can also reduce the intensity of that by using a less potent agent, such as clopidogrel, for example, or a lower dose of prasugrel, or something like that. Essentially, you reduce the intensity of antiplatelet treatments, then you save um, the, uh, uh, the bleeding, and indeed, you may actually save some mace as well. Uh, through a different mechanism. So the key point to, to remember is that you restratify very clearly the thrombotic risks as well as the bleeding risk. You see where your patient comes and how those can be applied safely and longer term. Thank you for your attention and welcome Dr. Sharma hey. to the Convention wow. Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah.